Hi YouTube, today I'll show you my ADSB setup that I've now moved to my apartment in Atlanta, Georgia. We're looking here at the antenna itself, the spider antenna. And unlike before, I have this mounted outdoors on the balcony of my apartment. I could indeed mount many antennas here if I really wanted. This is a spider antenna, again, that I used previously. It's designed to pick up ADSB signals at 1090 uh, megahertz. And I have it secured to the balcony with two zip ties. One at the middle part of this PVC support, and a second one at the bottom of the PVC to one of the bars of the balcony railing. One thing that's not so ideal is I'm using a long stretch of coax RG59 cable about 10 or 20 feet to link this to my SDR. RG59 is not quite as good as RG6, but based on what I'm seeing, it seems to be okay. That coax extends across the deck of the balcony to the screen in the door, which I've clamped down so I don't lose the cold air from the air conditioner in the apartment. I'll go ahead and get you one more view of the spider. In addition, let's take a look at the compass on my digital phone to get an idea of which direction has the least interference. Also see if I can focus on that nicely. That's a little difficult. There we go. Yeah, so it's a little little hard for my phone to focus on that. Okay, so I might pull up the compass on my phone and we'll see which direction in which I'm pointed and which has the least interference. That's quite hard to see. There we go. So I'm pointed roughly southeast now and that's towards more buildings, so more interference that way. Let's see where I point towards the direction that's easiest to see. Southwest in that direction. Okay. Southwest and east. East that way. So I guess, you know, north east, southwest, probably I'll get the best signal and have the least interference. I'm pointed roughly east going this way and southeast, south, southwest. Yeah, maybe actually south, now that I'm looking at southwest and northeast, I have the best reception and we'll compare that with what I see on the screen of my PC showing read ADSB. Before I show the outputs from read SB on my Linux PC, I'll show you the actual SDR portion of my setup. Looking through the balcony door, we can see the spot where the RG59 comes out. There's probably a bit too much cable. And that is then connected to a coax female to SMA male adapter right there. Yeah, I have that in focus now. A female female SMA connector and then an SMA male to MCX male connector that, that finally links the connection to my new Elec NESDR Mini. The new Elec NESDR Mini is plugged into my Raspberry Pi 2 over here. I need to have a 1 amp power supply, not 700 milliamps, but 1 amp in order to power this machine. It seems the combination of the Wi-Fi dongle, the USB Wi-Fi dongle, and the SDR and the touchscreen and everything else is, is too much for a roughly 3.5 watt adapter. I would guess this needs about 5 watts to run. Anyway, so I have read SB 
the feeder scripts, TAR 1090, and Graphs 1090 all installed remotely on my Raspberry Pi 2. I'm using this in a headless configuration, and I can access this over my home Wi-Fi using SSH. In the next part of the video, I'll go to my main Linux PC, look at the screen and the outputs of both the local software and ADSB Exchange feeder pages for my ADSB listening setup. Alright, for the last part of the video, I'll show you the updated interfaces I'm using to analyze my ADSB data. The first change in my setup is just the change in location to Atlanta, to an apartment balcony, to an outdoor mount of the spider antenna. And the second part then is how I've adjusted the computer software configuration for analyzing my ADSB data. I'll start by showing you the Atlanta radar, not really radar, but ADSB output from ADSB Exchange. These are all the planes that are being detected by ADSB feeders, ADSB Exchange feeders, excuse me. And we can see there's some 54 planes on the screen. It's about 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so not a lot of flights. Many descending planes into the Atlanta metro area, probably landing in Hartsfield-Jackson. As we can see when I focus here. Now let me zoom out again. Okay, so that's what's being picked up by all receivers in the area. Now I'll switch to my Raspberry Pi. This has several different packages running, including Read SB that we saw before, and TAR 1090 as well as Graphs 1090. This is Read SB as we saw in one of my previous ADSB videos. The planes that are being picked up are within 50 to 60 nautical miles, not as far as in my past setup in rural Ohio. I'm not really surprised because I would think with all the buildings that's blocking lines of sight towards the horizon. You saw even my apartment complex right beyond the antenna there's another building in the way. Again we can see the different planes and their altitude colored in here. Green going down to orange for lower planes and then bluish purple for higher planes one Allegiant Air plane I'm looking at here. About 11 right now with positions being broadcast. I've recorded the flight paths of planes for at least a day if not more. I have some 1,500. There's a bit of excess mileage towards the north, a, a gap where you know I'm still able to pick up the the flight positions as well as towards the southwest. One thing I've adjusted in my interface is I've used um, TAR 1090 which lets you run different instances. Again this is a web interface that's built off of Read SB or Dump 1090 and with a persistence instance I can collect flights over a 24 hour period and save them. And you can see there's about 1100 flights. When I've checked it's normally about 1070 when I restart this. And they're all within the circle of, of 50 nautical miles. This blue outline you see here I got through the Hey What's That panorama creator. And essentially it tells you what regions should be visible in given directions given obstructions from your location. So that's kind of helpful. Let's see if I can move this a little bit. Maybe not. I'll see if I can zoom out. Yeah, yeah, so I can zoom out and you can see a very heavily filled 50 nautical mile circle. It's too bad I can't get a lot further than that. And interestingly enough, I am getting some planes and little gaps in this, in this blue range outline. And again, there's directions to put in that range outline and go to Hey What's That in the GitHub repositories for TAR 1090. Okay, and then like before I have Graphs 1090 running. This is pretty cool. It, it shows different statistics of my ADSB reception. 
number of messages per second, positions per second over time. I can get averages over days, weeks, months, and years. Number seen and tracked, an average of 11, maximum of 35. There's a low around midnight, fewer planes flying at that time. You can see number of tracks seen with more than one message or a single message. ADSB range, an average maximum range of 18.4 nautical miles. A peak, the furthest plane that was caught, was around 62 nautical miles away. And then signal level that I'll have to compare to my measurements in southwest Ohio. I really don't think it's the coax that's as big of a deal as just the lack of clear lines of sight in multiple directions. ADSB maxima, 27 maximum seen, I guess. Message rate for aircraft, uh, per, per aircraft. CPU utilization by ADSB. Not a lot. Overall CPU utilization. Memory, core temperature. Uh, big bump outgoing and incoming probably when I was installing stuff. And everything seems to be running pretty nicely. I'm really glad I'm doing this with my Raspberry Pi 2. I found a lot of random uses for it, but this seems like a great permanent use for that as you know, an Internet of Things type device, an ADSB receiver. So, that said, where I hope to go from here is possibly mounting my setup on top of a building, maybe somewhere in Emory or Georgia Tech's campus with a clear line of sight given appropriate permission and see how many planes I pick up. Hopefully one's much further away, 100 or 200 nautical miles from there. You know, it could be really cool for people to log into this server remotely. And then, besides that, just possibly making a coax collinear antenna and further boosting distance, seeing further out towards the horizon. And with that said, if you have any suggestions for how to improve my setup, please write those in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching, and please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye now.